time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. Up to number 71 on the 49ers roster countdown of 2023, and we have another undrafted free agent. This is kind of the realm of where we're at. You've got your future contract guys that we've kind of gone through most of those. Now we're into the undrafted free agent territory, and we've got Corey Luciano, interior offensive lineman, probably going to be a center only, could play some guard, um, has played some guard in the past, but uh, shout out to Josh, the 49ers guru, who uh, just absolutely killing this series, did a great job on research on this one, but I'll be honest, uh, there's not a lot out there on Corey Luciano, even if you look through his social medias and things, his Instagram's private, Like <laughs> he's, 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 that's just not really who this kid is. I can't tell you this, though. He rocks a mean mullet. Uh, he's got one of those just awesome looks uh, that just fits interior offensive line play. Um, he's wearing jersey number 61 for the 49ers. He's got good size and weight, 6'4", 307, which is ideal. Uh, that can play center, can play both guard spots. Now he's got 32-inch arms. That's going to move him away from any tackle prospects whatsoever. And he is already 24 which seems to be a very common thread the last two drafts and undrafted players because everybody got that COVID exemption. So you're seeing guys that were around for four, five, even six years with the redshirt process as well. Now, he's not fast, which usually is a pretty big staple of the 49ers offensive lineman. He moves decent well on tape. It's not bad, but it's not his best trait. He ran a 5.3 40-yard dash, which isn't bad, 1.87 10 yard that is bad 7.73 cone all right that's pretty average for a guy 300 pounds vertical is 31 inches that's solid eight um eight foot nine inch broad jump 23 bench press reps nothing really jumping out physically as far as measured traits that you could look at and say oh this is where he will win that's not it he's a film guy and we have already done one full breakdown over on Patreon. So if you haven't checked that out yet, just go to patreon.com slash 49ers Rush Podcast. In the little search field on our thing, you just type in Corey Luciano Enter, and that will pull up that video there. So now he was a priority undrafted free agent, but on the lower end, um, he only got $10,000 guaranteed contract, which made him eighth out of 11 of the initial undrafted free agents that they brought in. So it doesn't seem like this young gentleman will be promised a roster spot on the 53. I think far from it. We have him 71. 53 guys get a stay. We have him on the outside looking in. There's no doubt about that. Now he's from Danville, California. Went to Monta Vista High School here in California. Um, and, you know, led his team as a senior to a Division One championship um, on the North Coast section of, you know, the whole CIA and all that stuff. So he's done really, really well. But after that, he went to Diablo Valley College, a junior college um, in 2017, then transferred to the University of Washington, the Huskies. Um, while he was there, goodness, this dude, he's graduated Associate of Administration of Justice and a Bachelor's in Political Science. This dude's business-minded. His LinkedIn is on point. Uh, um, interned at the Alethian Wealth Advisors in Investment Strategies, things like that. He's coached flag football leagues. He's refed flag football leagues. Somebody that's very, very active, but doesn't really like the spotlight to be on him, it seems like. Um, not that he shies away from it or anything like that, but he's not one of those people that's like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, uh, which – Again, fits with interior offensive line play. Now, he was a three-star recruit, but after his time at Diablo Valley Junior College, he was huge. He was the number one JC offensive guard transfer in the country. Um, chose to go to the University of Washington. He was number 25 JC recruit in the country. And as soon as he showed up there, moved to center because of an injury, and then it didn't look back. Um, started two years plus at the center position. Um, 2022 All Pac-12 honorable mention. All Pac-12 third team. Um, he's got a lot of accolades there. And probably my favorite thing about Corey Luciano, he earned the Earl T. Gray Tough Husky Award at the team's postseason awards banquet, and it shows on tape. He is a fun, fun, fun watch. Um, he, here's what I, now he played in 34 college games. So he's got some experience and that's after transferring from junior college, right? 
He's a Jake Brindle mini me. Not as athletic, a little bit slower, but he wins in pass protection. That is what he hangs his hat on. Great in pass pro. Not good. He is a great pass protector. However, and this is kind of the transition that Kyle Shanahan and the offense is taking. He's not an excellent run blocker. He's a good run blocker, but way better in pass pro. Moves well in space, but not amazing. He's not your hyper-athletic center like an Alex Mack that can get out there and do all kinds of things. It's not who he is. He is a great pass-protecting center. That is what makes him stand out. Now, his offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, said, quote, Corey has done a really good job. He's been a real vocal leader in workouts and things like that, end quote. So the leadership is there. The experience is there. The toughness mindset is there. The intelligence is there. He's got all of those things. But it's a real uphill climb. Um, you brought him in. The low guarantee kind of tells you a lot that, hey, maybe perhaps Corey could blossom into something that is beautiful, but it's going to take time. If we're looking at the center depth chart, which is where I think he's going to kind of land a spot, the guard depth is just, I don't think he could get close to penetrating that. So if we're just looking at the center depth chart, Jake Brindle just signed an extension. He's the guy. Corey Luciano and Nick Sakel, they're kind of fighting for that backup center role. And I think it's very possible that Nick Sakel will be the backup center. John Valenciano will be the backup to both guards. Then who? We've already done Keith Ishmael um, in this series. He's a center as well. And Corey Luciano. I think those two guys are kind of fighting for that center role on the practice squad. Keith Ishmael and Corey Luciano. That's what it is. So do I think he will make this 53-man roster? I do not. I don't even think that he has an opportunity to get very, very close to it. However, this is a developmental play to provide depth at one of the most crucial positions on an offense and that's the center and Kyle Shanahan values the center very, very much. And so it's just constantly building that depth and churning the backside of this roster so that you will have options. It wasn't, I think it was three years ago. We went through five centers before we even got to week one of the NFL a season. So if something like that happens again, you're talking about somebody that would be starting week one. He's that caliber of player, but the roster is in much better shape than it used to be. So Jake Brendel, John Valenciano, Nick Sakel, then you're talking fighting for that number four spot at the center. So practice squad's probably where he's going to be. Thank you again, Josh, the 49ers guru. And for us here, we'll just keep counting them down.